Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry lab video covers the dehydration of 2-methyl cyclohexanol experiment. This is part two, carrying out the dehydration reaction. There are some safety considerations for today's experiment. First of all, we're working with concentrated phosphoric acid, which is extremely corrosive. Wear gloves when handling this reagent and avoid skin contact. Avoid skin contact with 2-methyl cyclohexanol, 1-methyl cyclohexene, and 3-methyl cyclohexene in today's experiment. Wear gloves when handling these reagents and products. We'll be doing a distillation today, and one of the things with distillations is you need to be careful not to distill the dryness. You need to make sure that you stop the distillation before it completely dries out. Another safety item for distillation is you need to wait until your distillation apparatus has cooled before you disassemble the parts that get hot. The idea with this is that it'll keep hot vapor from entering the lab. If you let it cool down, the vapor will condense and it'll be less likely to escape into the lab. The experiment will start with a 25 milliliter round bottom flask and you put one or two boiling chips inside that flask. We're going to boil some liquids today and this is going to help smooth out the boiling. Next, we'll add 5.00 milliliters of 2-methyl cyclohexanol. This is the liquid reagent in today's experiment. Next, we'll add the catalyst, which is concentrated phosphoric acid. Concentrated phosphoric acid is very corrosive. You'll need to make sure that you're careful with this reagent, wear gloves, and avoid skin contact. Add 1.5 milliliters of phosphoric acid. Once the reagents have been added, swirl the flask a little bit, and then we'll hook it up to a distillation apparatus. This experiment assumes you have a knowledge of distillation. Check out my previous video on distillation for more details on how to set up a distillation apparatus and all of the particular details that are important when doing a distillation. Here we're just going to go over the major points for this experiment. Once you get your distillation apparatus set up, there's a few things you should look for. First, make sure all the joints are snug. If they're loose, you could lose vapor through the joints. The blue keck clamps do a pretty good job of keeping the apparatus from falling apart, but they don't always keep the joints tight. Turn the condenser water on slowly at first. If you turn it on too fast, you run the risk of blowing the hoses off. Also, make sure that the condenser water is flowing in through the bottom port of the condenser and out through the top. Next, you'll want to make sure that the heating mantle is making good close contact with the bottom of the round bottom flask. Make sure there's no air gap between it. Finally, make sure that the thermometer bulb is set to the right location. The thermometer bulb should be below the elbow of the distillation head. Make sure the heating mantle is plugged into the variable transformer and not the wall current. Next, set the transformer to about 70% power and turn it on. Attach a collection vessel to your distillation apparatus. Watch the apparatus and wait for the distillation to progress. As the distillation progresses, it'll look like this. The distillate should boil just below 100 degrees Celsius and it may appear cloudy because the water and alkene products are insoluble. As the distillation nears completion, you'll notice the temperature starting to drop on the thermometer. This is because there isn't enough vapor coming over to keep the thermometer warm. This is what the apparatus looks like at this point. When it reaches this stage, you should turn off the variable transformer and remove the heating mantle and allow the distillation apparatus to cool. The distillate contains alkene products, but it also contains water and some significant amounts of acid. Transfer the distillate into a point bottom test tube. You might notice two phases in the point bottom test tube. Water is more dense than the alkene product, so water is going to be on the bottom. Pipette out the lower aqueous phase and discard it. To neutralize the acid, next we'll wash with saturated aqueous sodium bicarbonate. This is a water solution of baking soda. It's a weak base that will neutralize any phosphoric acid that co-distilled. Agitate the tube to allow the phases to mix, and then let it sit for a while for the phases to separate. Be aware that the reaction of sodium bicarbonate and acid produces some CO2 so there could be a bit of pressure buildup in your test tube. Again, the aqueous phase here, the sodium bicarbonate layer, is more dense than the product alkene, so it'll be the bottom layer. Pipette out the bottom aqueous layer and discard it. The remaining top layer is the product mixture. Pour that into a small vial and add some magnesium sulfate drying agent. The purpose of the magnesium sulfate is to absorb any water that might be dissolved in the organic layer. Add enough magnesium sulfate to make a thin layer on the bottom of the vessel. You don't want to add too much because it'll become cakey and then you won't have anything to filter. You'll know you've added enough if it remains free flowing. After the mixture has sat for a while, we'll filter off the magnesium sulfate using a microfiltration apparatus. This consists of a small pipette with a little bit of cotton jammed into the tip. Push the cotton down into the tip of the pipette, clamp it to a ring stand, and then pipette the mixture through into a clean, dry, pre-weighed vial. 
the cotton will filter out any magnesium sulfate that gets into the pipette. This reaction mixture contains the alkene products of interest, but could also contain some unreacted alcohol starting materials. We'll need to do GC analysis to tell for sure what's in there. A typical mass for this reaction is 0.78 grams of liquid product mixture. To make a sample for GC, add one drop of the reaction mixture to a clean, dry vial and then dilute with one milliliter of acetone. This diluted sample will be appropriate for GC analysis. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.